A full environmental analysis of the proposed Line 3 replacement project has begun. Enbridge wants to decommission the current Line 3 pipeline that runs from Alberta through Minnesota and ends in Superior, Wisconsin. The company would then put in an updated pipeline, but in a different route. The Minnesota Department of Commerce announced last week that a subunit would be putting together the report of Enbridge's preferred route. This report would also examine the many concerns of residents and groups who filed public comments during the scoping period. I'm joined in studio now with our reporter, Mel Meyer, who met with some of the people who entered statements. Mel, what can you tell us about their concerns? Thank you, Dennis. I visited groups and individuals around northern Minnesota on various sides of the issue, and they found that they were concerned about what this could mean for the economy and the environment. And tonight we'll hear from some of the environmental factors that could be assessed in the final report. We decided to stay involved in the, in the pipeline process. Craig and Sandy Sturley were the first to file comments in May of 2015 on the proposed Sandpiper and Line 3 replacement projects. The original route of the Sandpiper would have crossed their property, citing the Enbridge Kalamazoo River oil spill of 2010 and Minnesota spills Sterling says that he worries about those living near the proposed route. You know, they could have long-term uh, negative ramifications for whoever lives nearby. Sterling says there are many engineering problems that should be addressed. One study found interference from power lines can contribute to accelerated pipeline corrosion. Part of the EIS process needs to look at whether those two are going to be compatible for a 50-year time period. Enbridge says the pipeline's age and current wear and tear warrants a new line. Since the Kalamazoo spill, Enbridge says it's updated its pipeline technology. In the end, it'll be more efficient and, and a safer um, infrastructure um, for Minnesota. Lindsay Ketchell is concerned that Enbridge did not think ahead when installing the line about 50 years ago. Because of additional oil lines and other factors, the company is unable to use portions of the previous route. Does it make sense to sacrifice some of the most important recreational lakes in, the, in Minnesota and the headwaters of the Mississippi and the drinking water sources for the cities in St. Cloud to this new, new pipeline? Various groups want the EIS to address the impact on water quality, should the line break and when the pipeline is put in. Proposed pipeline, to the extent there would be any kind of spill, would, would impact lakes that are already um, under stress. It could also have tremendous impact on drinking sources. According to the Department of Natural Resources, groundwater supplies about 75 percent of Minnesota's drinking water. So it doesn't take long for any of the impurities and the impacts on the, in the surface to get into that groundwater, which is now that drinking source. Ketchell says her organization is realistic and understands the importance of oil. However, there should have been a longer scoping period and had hard copies of informational material about the project more readily available. We really want to get to the best yes we can, but we need as much thoughtful analysis as we can to get there. With so many routes, repercussions, and alternatives to include in the report, some worry that the timetable is not long enough. The big question will be, is 280 days sufficient to get the job done? It should be noted that the many people I talked to agreed that something had to be done with this nearly 50-year-old pipeline. However, the disagreement comes into play of what, um, what the EIS would decide for it to happen. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mal, for that live report tonight. Now, tomorrow night, Mal will bring us the second part of this series. We'll hear from some of the pro proponents of the Line 3 project who would largely cite job creation as one of the benefits. If you've enjoyed this segment of Lakeland News, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution to Lakeland Public Television.